everyone, welcome back. If you haven't tuned in yet uh, and watched any of the other comics, please feel free to go back afterwards and watch both the Walla and the Apple Cat comics. Right now, we are with the lovely Madeline, uh, or as we know from the comic, her name is Lux Moderna. And just if you have never heard about the Amplify Her project, it is a feature documentary film, an animated motion comic series, which is what we're talking about today. And we also have a lovely physical, yes, physical still exists people, graphic novel. Um, these are available for purchase on, look, she's got one too! Ah! Um, these are available for purchase on our website, so feel free to go to AmplifyHer.com to get your very own in the mail, and they come in really cool purple envelopes with stickers and all sorts of cool stuff. If you don't have one, why? Get one out. Um, we'd like to start this motion comic off with getting a little bit of an intro from Madeline about what we're about to see. This comic is really a dream come true. I've always wanted to be a comic book character. And I really love that in our exploration, we went into the realm of sort of a surrealist fantasy horror comic uh, that really is about my internal process and journey through living on this planet and the difficulties that come with embodiment and health issues and really overcoming and finding one's true gifts to share with the world through that process. And uh, that's really what the comics are all about. That's amazing. And wanted to also just sort of shout out uh, to our lovely illustrator on this comic, which was Molly Applejohn. Um, there was a really close connection I think that you two shared. Did you want to tell us a little bit about that? Maybe our audience might be able to see some of that spark when they watch the animation. Sure. We really came together in the whole process of developing the comics, writing the comics from a space of mutual wounding. So when I met Molly and came together with Molly, it was really beautiful that we were paired together through, because through the process of working on the story for the comic, really it became a weaving of our two journeys as individuals and sort of recognizing that there's similar patterns and challenges that we faced. I don't want to give too much away. However, through coming together through the comic, we both reach a greater level of understanding of what our challenges really are in life. And I don't want to get more specific than that because I feel like I, I love it. something He's away. He's a mysterious lady through and through. Uh, let's go ahead and roll this clip and watch the motion comic. log off. Ha! <laughs> Lightning, you sound like my mother. Damn it! My armor will be busted from going AFK mid-fight again. And I'll have an XP penalty. Frack. So, you think there are plants growing out of you? And, um, your video game dog is talking to you. Wolf. Sounds like a job for Derpex. Wow, my vines will be so pleased to have help with their social anxiety. Otherwise, I don't really see anything on your chart. No chlorophyll in your blood work. <laughs> I guess what I can do is give you a free sample for an antifungal for the vine problem. Take care now. <sighs> Bedtime, finally. Did 
still tired after 20 hours of sleep. Maybe I need another 10 years. You're back so early? I thought today was for music. Ugh, yeah, later. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to slay some demons. And go see Lux. See who, Madeline? Lux Moderna, the gilded half of me. I don't remember her face, only that she was with me when I was a child, and that we were reflections of each other. But this disease ruined us. When it consumed me, it obscured her. And I miss her. I want, I need her back. Oh, that's very flowery. And I'm, I'm not sure it applies to the game. It certainly sounds like you got some demons, though. And speaking of, we got company. XP given, loot dropping company. Crap, not again. Um, I guess we can fight, but if you fall asleep now, it's just gonna low from the last save point. We don't have time to fight, we have to run. Just like, two more steps. <laughs> Madeline. Wake up, Madeline. We should get to work. Alto won't record itself. Less reverb. Ugh. So much for Derpex. Make it stop. Please, make it stop. Damn it. It's not going to stop. Do you know how to make a mess? more visceral bass? Heavier rhythm. into a stupor. You can wait for it to go away, but it might never. You can make anything you want. You just have to do it. Remember the promise we made? When I grow up, I want to make magic and light. The world needs more of that. Like you, Lux. Everybody deserves a guide like you. Can I be like you? That's up to you but I'll do everything I can to make it happen. I promise. Lux? Oh, whoa! So, this is the other side of the screen? concert I have ever seen. It's beautiful. 
beautiful. Huh, well, I told her to take that antifungal, but no. And just like that, the whole world can hear you. This must be Lux. everyone that was fantastic um, I'm feeling a little bit warmer not just because this onesie is incredibly warm but also because the motion comic was so enduring did you want to tell us a little bit about your initial re reaction I know that this has been the first time um, that you've actually seen the comic put together Sure. I mean, I'm really excited about how it all came together. I think that Denver did a fantastic job with the animation. I was really blown away by how that all came together. And I was really happy with um, ultimately how my score blended with uh, David, uh, our sound, sound guy. Uh, how his work, you know, I'm very sensitive to the musical score, of course, and the sound effects and everything. And I'm really pleased with the world that was created. And I feel like it complemented Molly's art and Denver's animation so well. So I'm just really happy with how it all came out. Uh, I, I really love the climax of the comic and the sharing of the lyrics and the, um, the whole intention of the song Stellarium was to sort of create a world where we were in wonder and awe of where we are. And so I'm really grateful that that's where we end up in the comic is in that space of total alchemy with self and nature and each other and communion and harmony through music. Great. Uh, so I think in this comic, there's quite a few layers. Um, one of the layers obviously first being sort of the video game world. And then, of course, the layer of more of the dream side, the dream sequence, and then the vines. There's a lot of symbolism going on. Did you want to go through some of those symbols and tell us a little bit about sort of their intentions in the story itself? Um, in the game, in the game world, or in the video game world, um, you're sort of battling or conquering something specifically. Um, can you talk a little bit about? your your video game persona versus um, who you are as the main character. Yes, I really feel like in this challenging world that we live in, everyone sort of has their ways of escaping the reality that's in front of us. And for a very, very long time due to chronic illness and just sort of the time I was born and how I was brought up, video video games became that escape for me. And it was through video games that I found a whole realm where I could accomplish things like, you know, go do a quest and get some XP and get, you know, some loot. And then, you know, I felt like I had accomplished something. I could run for hours and hours and hours, even though my real legs couldn't carry me, but, you know, a couple blocks maybe in a day. And so, I really felt when we were creating the comic that, you know, we wanted to show the attempt to escape from pain and suffering because it's just such a common human experience. And I'm grateful on one hand that video games became the place and space where I battled so many demons in my life, you know, uh, symbolically and, Ultimately, I'm really grateful that I went down that path uh, instead of going down the path of, you know, substance abuse, drug use, alcohol use, things like that that are really, really um, significant um, detrimental forms of escapism that affect our communities all over the world. So um, I just wanted to show it in some way, the grappling with, you know, trying to avoid reality. 
Yeah, and I think one of the, the big things in this one is, of course, the symbolism of the vines. Um, and of course, and I think the vines for many different people watching this could mean a diff a anything really. We've, we've had people watch it in test groups thinking that it was maybe talking about anxiety or about depression. Um, in your case, it was about Lyme disease and something that you've been struggling a lot with. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey, I guess, with the illness and what the vines are representing in that comic, that struggle that's happening between the vines um, being your disease and your character? So when Molly and I got together and we were trying to figure out a way to visually depict that sort of internal suffering and that which takes hold as a more physiological aspect of, say, anxiety or depression, um, we were looking towards using a, a visual symbol that would not only represent that taking hold in the body as a real physical reality, but also something that would um, be of nature, so that this is not something that is a man-made you know, disease or, or something that's affecting us. This is part of existence in a natural world. And so that is why we opted to use a natural element to show it because it's not just, it's not just us grappling with uh, reality, it's us grappling with nature and how to integrate and, and become one with nature and harmonize with it, not just run away from it and be afraid of it. Definitely, and I think what's really nice with the use of vines is also when we were looking at the soundscape was adding in sort of the, the creepy kind of vine-like sounds that, that had this sense of um, like almost like a sense of suffering, but also um, confining. When uh, Denver and I were talking about the animation, one of the things that he did intentionally uh, that you may or may not have noticed is that he kept a lot of the vine scenes contained within the comic boxes themselves. And that was also to kind of continue to, to emphasize this idea of feeling, feeling trapped or um, maybe a little less, a little bit more helpless than, than somebody that potentially wouldn't have this sort of obstacle in front of them. I think what also is quite interesting that I'd love for you to comment on is the trend, the journey with the vines. So at the beginning, your character is constantly trying to rip them out. But by the end of the comic, the vines kind of grow. And I like to actually in the shot here, I like to think of it almost as they grow to the point where it's, you know, a, a castle like structure that you're playing on top of. What is the lesson in, in, in the story of the vines? The story really points to what happens when you accept your condition, when you accept your humanity, when you accept that you are part of nature, when you accept that you just are in the situation that you are in, there's a certain amount of relief and peace and a new space to create from that, that opens up. And I really feel that, you know, in the beginning there's you know this is a, my story really and this is so many people's story is that there is resistance there's there's the no i don't want this i don't don't want this i want to get this away from me or you're pulling away and hiding from it because you don't want to open to the experience because it's too difficult and so what happened for me in my own healing journey and i i really believe that this was a critical moment for me and it took me i don't know about 15 years or something to get to this point where I wanted so badly to not be sick. I wanted to be healthy. I just want, I, but I didn't want to be sick. And so I was resisting being sick for so long. And then finally I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to stop fighting against this. I, I'm not going to resist this anymore. I just am this, this is what I am. And that's okay. And really it was in a matter of, you know, the next two to three years that my health has done a complete 180 and I'm healthier than I've been in 15 years. So I really do believe that that point of acceptance and stopping resisting that growth and evolution really lends itself to opening up the space to truly evolve into one's highest and best path. I think that's kind of reflective in some of the music that you performed as Lux Moderna as well, when you started to create music, um, you created it from 
a very, and, and I would say a very feminine, but very um, medicinal, if that was the correct term, um, frame, which I'd love to, for you to comment on, because I think your music uh, is transcendent in many ways. I, I find myself listening to it a lot when I need to find clarity or strength um, or even just a, a strong sense of focus. Mm. I'm so happy to hear that you use it in that way. I'm, I'm always so grateful when I have people reach out to me and express to me the more healing benefits people have received through my music, um, especially grateful, you know, on my uh, opening the pentagram was all mantra music from my time as a yoga instructor uh, when I was really focused on that. And, you know, the mantras in, on that album, one of them is for, you know, healing addiction. And so I've had a couple people reach out to me who have used that album getting through their addictions, not even knowing that it contains a mantra for that, that I slipped in intentionally, you know, um, for people to benefit from. But my music has always come from a place of first being medicine for myself. And then I discovered, oh, this is medicine for everyone. So I just do my best to share it. I, I'm holding on to a lot right now that I haven't released. Uh, so I'm looking forward to sharing more of that with the world when the time comes. I want to talk about the white wolf and a little bit about what the white wolf represents in this. Because I think um, it's a beautiful symbol. And I know that there is some sort of depth to the character. Uh, and I'm curious, what, what, what is the white wolf? What is it symbolizing uh, in the comic? Well, the white wolf is kind of a symbol, but more to me a real character because I, from the time I was a young child, I had a very mm, active imagination, like many children do. And I had my, you know, my best friends that were, you know, not necessarily in a physical body. And one of those, and the main one was a giant white wolf that I named Lightning, I think when I was like six years old or something like that. And uh, I used to have many, many journeys in my dreams with this white wolf. And this white wolf was just kind of there for me. Later in life, when I was doing some shamanic drum journeying, uh, when I was in college, I reconnected with that wolf spirit. And, you know, people talk about their spirit animal or, you know, these helper spirits. That's really how I feel about this particular entity in my life. And, yeah, she's been with me my whole life. And um, also there's another like black wolf that didn't make it into the comic but is also related to her and so to me the two have been sort of the light and the shadow and i find it interesting that the shadow aspect didn't make it into the comic but that is also part of um where that character comes from and they're called lightning and thunder and i actually have a track on my first album called lightning and thunder which is in the film and or thunder and lightning actually and so that's in reference to those two wolves that's fantastic <laughs> i didn't know all of that so it's nice to hear it uh, to, to understand that it was also part of that light and dark um sort of mythological journey that we touch in the feature film um I think in a, in a different way than in the comic. When I was about 12 years old, my mother introduced me to studying and reading about Buddhism and Carl Jung. And so at the age of 12, 13 or so, I became familiar with the concept of archetypes and the collective unconscious. And uh, Jung became one of my favorite authors, and actually, I would definitely say he's my favorite writer uh, by far. I just, when I read his work, I feel like my own soul is communicating with me. So he's really been someone that I respect immensely, and I mean, he coined the term archetype, he coined the term collective unconscious. I mean, he's, he's a brilliant man and brilliant artist, and. I had been waiting for many years for this book to be released called The Red Book. And it, it's basically one of the most incredible 
tomes of work from Jung that he wrote when he was young and actually later in life he said that all of his work was explaining what happened when he wrote the Red Book. And I was at the time had written, mm, I don't know, maybe three or four Lux Moderna songs and I was looking for a name for my, to be my artist name. And it just so happened that I was living in uh, this artist collective, the convent in San Francisco at the time. And um, one of my friends and housemates, MG, came over and just plopped the red book. I mean, it's this massive book, actually. I have it. Um, it's, I could show it to you. It's like this amazing tome. And he like <laughs> put it right in front of me. In divination style, I was like, okay, my name's in here, I'm gonna get it. And so I just opened the book up and the page I landed on is talking about the Katabasis. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's the Greek journey through the underworld. And it was referring to uh, the great sapphire or the point of light on the horizon or the new consciousness that comes through after going down through the underworld and coming back up the other side like the sun, the sun rises and there's that point of light that dawns on the horizon. And it was called Lux Moderna, I mean the new light or the new consciousness after going through the underworld. So it's this point of light that you're constantly moving towards while you're in that cycle going through the underworld and the middle world and the upper world and then back down into the underworld. You're always moving towards that point of light. So that's where the term or the name Lux Moderna comes from is Jung's Red Book. And in the comic, you there's a part where you're meeting Lux Moderna. So your character is Madeline, and then you're meeting uh, Lux Moderna. And there's also a line um, in the comic that reads, "This pain consumes me and obscures Lux." And I'm mm -hmm. curious what what's going on in that scene, uh, and what exactly. You know, basically what's going on for those who may not uh, recognize sort of the, the myth behind what's happening. The story there is that Lux, you can kind of interpret it in several different ways. Uh, there's two main ways of sort of looking at it, I suppose. One being that we all have an ideal version of ourselves. And it's what we want to project out into the world and actualize in the world. And Lux, you know, is in some way that for me. However, the true source of Lux for me is the deeper meaning, which is actually that Lux reflects and actually symbolizes my higher self. So that aspect of myself that I'm always like that guiding light in my soul that pushes me towards my own divine purpose or my own, um, you know, creative, true, unique offerings in the world that are from my spirit and my soul. And when I, it's saying, you know, oh, it, it, this the pain obscures her. Well, the pain is obscuring her because those those kind of conditions, illness, and anything that holds us back in this physical realm can kind of dim the light. I mean, you can see this in the eyes of sick people, is that the light in their eyes, that luminosity in their eyes actually starts to go away. And when you see that dimming, it, that light, you know, Lux is not coming through as much anymore. And so a lot of, you know, the work I've done in the healing arts, you know, it's about bringing that light back and bringing that light back into the eyes so that you can truly see you know, that person's vibrancy and life force pushing through. And that's, that's also what Lux is. So I think one of the last questions I want to ask, and it's a, it's a, I think it's an important one. Um, when people watch this comic or they read this comic, what do you, what do you hope that they take from it? It's a, it's a really deep comic with lots of layers. And, um, and I've already seen people connect with the material. And so if there's, you know, one specific thing you want people to kind of walk away with, what is it? Well, the main thing I'd like people to take from it is that the medicine you need is already right there around you. It's in your backyard. It's within you. It is 
right there with you. And it's just a matter of, you know, letting go of the resistance and opening up to the availability of that medicine that is right there, whether it's music, whether it's something you can do in your life, or it's beekeeping and going out and working with the bees or working in your garden or you know painting a picture you already have the capacity and ability to create the medicine or access the medicine that you need and it's right there and i'm with you in your suffering and i'm so sorry that you have to suffer we all do here and i love you infinitely and i wish you the best and and sharing your gifts in the world because that's what the world needs. I think I got all tingly from that. It was fantastic. <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted to talk uh, in regards to the process or the story or anything that you really wanted to let people know about um, as we come to a close? Yeah, I just want to thank you, Nicole and Ian and Denver and Molly and all of the people that came to the retreat that we had to create the comic books. It was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life, being able to see all these incredibly nerdy, talented women come together to create absolutely badass comics. <laughs> so I, I really want to see more of that in the world and more all female art teams. I mean, there's, there's something to that that opens up a whole other realm of creative potential. And I, I think as a species, we should really be exploring that more. So I want to thank all of you and the Amplify Her crew for supporting that process and uh, inspiring that kind of action and collaborative action in the world. Wouldn't have been the same without you. Thank you very much for being <laughs> part of this pretty long journey. Um, but, you know, and hopefully it continues. I'd love uh, for this project to be, you know, considered a success, not only in our eyes, but in the eyes of, um, of, of the audience out there. And I'd love to be able to bring everyone back at some point. The 10 year anniversary. That'd be great. Be <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much. It's been incredible. Don't forget to check out AmplifyHer.com and goodbye for now.